Hello everyone, Darko2012 here with Global Government News, and I'm reading an article titled, Could Vancouver 2010 Be the Next 9-11? And, uh, you know, I I don't want to say I preach, but I, I just keep reiterating, or I, I reiterate how much 2010 is the year of false flag terrorism, and not real terrorism. Real terrorism is, is actually uh, not that common, and what we consider to be terrorism is usually um, militias trying to get foreign occupiers out of their country. They would be considered militias because their governments have been taken over by foreign bankers or uh, foreign occupiers, and they're trying to rid their country of those occupiers. So when we hear it in the media, we hear, oh, terrorists, much like when the U.S. collapses, um, their economy will collapse, and of course, their society will collapse. Um, and there's no social programs because, of course, we have discretionary spending now, which is part one of the parts of the IMF uh, receivership, where we will go into receivership. Um, there will be riots, and people will will start uh, be calling. Be, they will be referred to as terrorists. So, um, but false flag terrorists is a lot more common. And uh, so, if you don't know what it is, I have plenty of videos to check it out, but I don't have time to explain it here. I'm going to run through this, because this is pretty long, and I won't have time to read the entire thing. But I'll post the link, and you guys should really check this out, because, uh, you know, like I said, there's going to be a false flag terrorist attack um, that's going to be either in Yemen, or it's going to be uh, somewhere that will bring us to Yemen. Uh, the UK is uh, on high alert, which means that even though they have no evidence that there's going to be a terrorist attack, they're on high alert because their government carries out terrorist attacks. So, you know, of course they're going <laughs> to say that <laughs> they're just, that the alert is high because they're the ones carrying it out. <laughs> it's so hilarious. I mean, it's so hilarious. It's sad, but it's funny how obvious it is to me now. That's how sad it is. But I just wanted to say this right here. Look at this quote here. Educate and inform the whole mass of people. There are only... That they are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. Thomas Jefferson. That's a great quote, man. So, here we go. Warning. I now believe I have reasonable grounds to suspect there may be a false flag tax carried out during the Olympics in Canada. The games will take place in Vancouver and Whistler from uh, February 12th until February 28th. Below I have compiled the following suspicious activity by searching and analyzing the news from the various media sources and by speaking with citizens in, Canada, in Canada themselves. In my opinion, an attack on the Olympics, while it will be highly guarded, would be the perfect way to bring in a more, poli more of a police state measure and to fully integrate the U.S.-Canada into the functioning North American Union. But the question remains, is that really what is happening right now? I hope you will look at the information to make up your own mind as to what the patterns uh, what patterns you see unfolding. Any information provided is for analytical and educational purposes only. It is not meant to raise public awareness of current events and of potential dangers they could present. Warning signs: two tons of six uh, two tons out of six thousand tons of ammonium nitrate, a material used in making powerful explosives, have gone missing from a shipment. Uh, to a storage facility in the Vancouver area from a, from a company that was recently bought out for $22 billion by some of the world's largest financial companies. These companies are Goldman Sachs, AIG, the Carlyle Group, and others. The company uh, that was purchased is called Kinder Morgan. Kinder Morgan didn't report the two tons missing for over a month. When they did, when they did report it, it came back a week later as to only say simply they made a cler clerical error. Soon after the announcement, RCMP started their investigation and came back saying that they can't confirm what was really accounted for. They've also tried to point out that they were the only one company in the chain that had contact with the shipments. Uh, 250 truckloads were reportedly sent to Dino Noble, an explosives company, for packaging. And uh, I'm just going to skip to number two. The media is suddenly going a wild about how Al-Qaeda terrorists in Afghanistan are now using ammonium nitrate for explosives. And the Afghani government has banned the use of the material. Afghanistan has also banned the use of ammonium nitrate for fertilizer due to this problem. There are many articles like these. And this, guy, and this person had posted a bunch of links. Number three, right on cue. As if it were a screenplay in four days before the State of the Union address, the guy, and of course right after the Christmas Day bomber attached to Yemen, and now the Fort Hood shooters uh, 
uh, priest, whatever is attached to the Amen. Uh, the guy who have all heard since 9-11, haven't seen in a long time, and is probably dead, Mr. Osama bin Laden, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a round of applause. He just came out of what is probably going to turn out to be yet another fake video and predictably praised the underwear bomber that burned his genitals in a failed bombing attempt on Christmas Day of 2009 and said the attacks will continue until we stop supporting Israel. In fact, look just how effective these guys are. They can't get our freedoms taken away by our own government simply by penetrating our security and hurting only themselves in the process. Clever, aren't they? And it says, number four, in a recent development, Canadian Parliament has been prologued a term where they are uh, where they are suspended typically in order to make new legislation and where the government's uh, power resides within the office of the prime minister until march 3rd remember that date after the games the prime minister has also been given sole responsibility for making the judgment call to shoot down any hijacked aircraft normally this is not his responsibility this is strangely the, uh, the same before 9-11 where Dick Cheney was given control of the military air defenses for a short time due to war games, yeah, yeah exercises to have NORAD stand down. Uh, and he denied the request to shoot down the plane approaching the Pentagon. This was testified to the, uh, by, the, by the Transportation Secretary, Norman uh, Mineta, in front of the 9-11 Commission, though no one mention of this was given in the final report. You can still watch the video of this testimony there. And then number five, on February 14th, 2008, Canada and the U.S. signed an agreement which allows for the deployment of U.S. troops inside Canada. And if the military wasn't enough, police officers are allowed to come join in now. That's right. Most of the police in your local community have been militarized, possibly have CIA, either as the mayor or in the actual police department, or some kind of fed in there running it. Um, headline. New maritime security law will deputize U.S. officers in every part of Canada during integrated operations. North American Union, anyone? It says uh, number six. British Columbia's private office has been frozen, leaving the government's uh, government unaccountable. Says a leaked letter. It's number seven. Hospitals canceled 2,400 elective surgeries to make room for apparently much more expected patients needing surgeries during the Olympics. Of course, public relations is blaming them for doing it for other reasons like saving money. They say that even if it makes no sense because the government has no problem spending well over billions of dollars on the Olympics, they are clearly not hurting for money, even if that is what some people think. Yeah, I, that's a good point because they act as if like, oh, we're going to save money. But, you know, I think it, I, I'm pretty sure it was Canada, and I'm speculating here, but it's, it, it was either Canada from the last uh, big Olympics they had or – Another country that held the Olympics, and they're like they've been pay, trying to pay off uh, for the past like 20 years or the last 10 years the debt that they that that it, they incurred for hosting the Olympics. So you see, the Olympics is nothing but a scam. Like in China, the people paid for all that showy stuff. The people pay for it, and then the corporations profit from it. And of course, they get the prestige, right? So it's a like I said, it's a big scam. Hospitals canceled, uh, let's say, number eight. It seems that people may be getting tipped off or have prior knowledge already. What are they afraid of? It is the largest joint security operations ever taken on by Canada and the U.S. is there to protect them. Obama is not alone. It says presidents and prime ministers of other countries around the globe are sending representatives as well. And number nine, the same Israeli company, Verint, whose camera systems were on buses, and the London Underground, and inconveniently for us, malfunctioned on 775 during the London bombings, was the same company to install cameras in the Vancouver airport and the subways in Montreal and other key locations in Canada. Also worthy of noting is that in the past, during a large terrorist attack where the systems are installed as the Dow goes down, stocks at Varen have always shown to go up. They are said to be connected to the uh, Madrid bombings on 311 as well as 911. And uh, we're almost done here. We're running out of time, but number 10, security measures have been increased to a historical all-time high with a budget of $900 million amid financial turmoil. Security includes the foreign United States military using NORAD to secure the air and purchasing 800 CCTV security cameras, new fences, two remote submarines to check underwater. So, yeah, this is all infrastructure that's not going away after the Olympics, most likely. It'll be there for good. So, And like I said, at your expense, you pay for your own enslavement.